Assalamualaikum. Welcome to the uh, course of MBA Product Management, and uh, this is actually an elective subject in our UMP MBA. So whoever is taking a product management elective subject is actually under the specialization of technology management. So the textbook that we are going to refer to is written by Merle Crawford and Anthony D. Benedetto. And, they and it was written in 2014. So we are going to go to chapter 1. So chapter 1 is on the strategic elements of product development. And basically, if you can see, this is basically what is going to cover in this chapter. So the first thing is why we study products, okay, but the new product process is difficult about the globalization and the new product development. Uh, firms with a global innovation culture. A new product process is all about teams and not all new products are planned. Uh, what is a new product? The strategic elements of product development and, uh, and last is the basic new product process. So basically you need to know why do you need to study products? Okay, or even companies, why do they need to study on products? Okay, why? It's because it's actually it's a big business. Okay, so it consists of billions of dollars annually just on developing on the technical part. Okay, that's why it's very important to study too. And there's a lot of challenges. Okay, in um, uh, creating products, right? It's actually viewed by um, the business consultant called Gary Hamel. So Gary Hamel said, okay, that uh, the challenging uh, part of creating the radical innovation. It's actually one of the most important business issues. Okay, so it's a very big issue in business, right? So it's important that we need to know that in accelerating the innovation and uh, towards the business growth, so innovation is actually one of the top business challenges. Okay, now uh, in the current study now. Okay, so why do we need to study? Because the new product process is actually very difficult. Okay, if you can see uh, in the graph here, okay, there's actually 90% of the products can fail. Alright, this is actually quoted in press, in newspapers. Right, and according to the research report, 40% of products also might fail. Okay, and 10% of them claim that um, that products uh, can fail as well. Alright, so although you may hear much higher percentages. Okay, there is also other studies actually. They say that with evidence that forty percent actually forty percent of new products might fail. Okay, and it might be higher for consumer products. Okay, and much much lower for business to business products. So if you can see here, these are the products by the company called PNG, Procter and Gamble. Okay where you can even um, shop these products in Shopee alright however if you look behind all these products okay, it's, for, it's coming from an idea right okay so for every idea coming from PNG okay for example if, if uh, PNG uh, their, uh, their employees okay their employees gave out hundreds of ideas in producing products Okay, actually only few, fewer than 70 of these ideas might go through the screening, okay, and the evaluation might be around 50, alright, and then when they go to develop the products, it might be less than 30, okay, and maybe at the end, only 25 of these ideas might be commercialized, okay, so the success rate, okay, especially in consumer goods like this is much, much uh, low, maybe around 51% of the success rate of all the ideas given okay and even if it's in the healthcare industry it might be higher as high as 65% of uh, the success rate of ideas becoming products okay so well we as our buyer okay we, we can easily buy the products but there's a big story behind it okay so if you can see here okay this PNG is actually one of the top top firms okay so it's important for them to have a very good global innovation culture okay it's one of the most important elements for success okay so Procter and Gamble is actually developed globally 
Okay, and this firm actually have around 22 research centers. Okay, these 22 research centers is actually located in 13 countries. Okay, so all these um, uh, centers, okay, like market research, all the testing, okay, it's in US, it's in France. Okay, and if you look at this one from Apple, okay, <coughs> they are very strong in product design. Okay, and also knowing what is the customer requirement. Right, and uh, also if you look here, Okay, by Steve Jobs. Okay, he stated that they need to start with the customer experience. So they need to know uh, that the customer must have a very great experience. So from there, they will work backwards. Okay, to implement that technology, and also they need to know what is the competition currently uh, happening in the market and how to beat them. Okay, and this is especially when they want to enter new markets. Right. So from there, they will recruit the right team, connect all the dots, and they simplify. So Apple is very famous on simple, minimalist ideas, design, okay, and uh, that is the branding for Apple. Now, if you look here, this is about IKEA, okay. I'm sure most of you have been IKEA before. So if you look here, IKEA has actually identified unmet customer needs. Okay, something that the customer hasn't seen yet. Okay, and they have actually outsourced the designers. They don't have their own designers. They outsource the designers to complete the design. Okay, <coughs> so around the world, manufacturing firm, okay, that manufacture the furnitures, okay, they have their own uh, partners and they will compete, compete on manufacturing. Uh, in the right way and the fastest time. Okay, even in Malaysia, we have so many manu manufacturing firms under IKEA. So they, IKEA is using our uh, timber. Okay, but the design are from the designers that have been resourced, uh, out, uh, outsourced. Okay, so not only that, IKEA has also excellent global logistics. Okay, so with uh, excellent global logistics, they are able to deliver their product efficiently to stores and also to consumers okay now moving on the whole new product process is actually is all about teams okay the new product team is actually a cross-functional team if you notice there's uh, personnel from the marketing there's personnel from R&D there's personnel for manufacturing production design and so many other areas Okay, and all of the members of this team makes a great contribution towards the new product process and the success of this team is dependent on how well they interact with each other right so they try to avoid any narrow viewpoints okay and a lot of stereotypes okay they are open to a lot of new new ideas okay however not all new products are planned by teams okay if you look here there's a lot of products that actually are done accidentally. If you look at the right uh, low part, okay, the, the sweet and low zero calorie sweetener, okay, is actually a saccharin. A saccharin uh, is actually a sweet flavor, okay. It's actually accidentally um, uh, discovered by uh, one of the workers, okay, working in the lab in the laboratory in a university and uh, this guy actually did not wash his hands uh, before uh, having his meal okay uh, after he had worked in the lab he decided not to wash his hands and right and right away uh, ate his meal okay which is very dangerous however it actually led him to notice that there's some uh, sweet flavor when he had this meal Okay, so this is actually coming from the lab, which is an artificial sweetener. Okay, so from there, they took that name saccharin, okay, patented it, and, and, uh, and uh, created this sweetener called saccharin. Alright, on the left side, okay, on next of this sweetener, okay, there's another accidental product called Slinky. I'm sure you all have played this before, alright. 
This is also done accidentally, not planned, okay, by a Navy engineer. And he actually figured out how to use this spring to keep uh, the sensitive instrument in the ships from rocking themselves to death. So he knocked onto this prototype, okay, and when he knocked it off, Instead of crashing to the floor, it actually sprang, sprang downwards and went up again. <coughs> and it was uh, so exciting to see that, and it became a toy for children. Okay, and it was uh, sold worldwide, around millions and millions of dollars sold worldwide. Okay, now if you look at another one, Play Doh. Okay, Play Doh is actually. Uh, initially created as a cleaning product okay it was actually done to clean the wallpaper okay the wallpaper on the wall okay any filthy or dirty wallpaper they created that paste okay to be marketed to treat the wallpaper however it's actually make them bankrupt and instead of uh, having that as a cleaner for the wallpaper it produced this play-doh to save him from being bankrupt Alright, and it began to have a lot of attraction by the school children, okay, created as art, by uh, as craft, okay. So instead of being a remover of uh, dirt and also on, on any filthy in the wallpaper, it was actually a saviour for him and it was one of the most iconic toys at all time, right. So everyone until now, uh, children are playing this uh, plasticine, okay, uh, called Play-Doh. Right, uh, below there, down below, uh, if you notice, beside the slinky, it's called a Teflon. Okay, so they say that Teflon is actually um, one of the CFC, actually. Okay, they actually invented uh, a CFC. However, they noticed that actually this is can be done as a Teflon, all right, where um, it's actually... Uh, one of the mysterious chemical bits that are uh, found okay on the pen all right so it's extremely a uh, fantastic lubricant so when we cook okay under extreme high melting point all right it actually uh, given uh, uh, leaving only a few flakes okay so it's easy for us to cook right okay so it's actually accidentally uh, done instead of cfc they have used it onto the pan. Okay, the last one, which is Velcro. Okay, uh, it's actually people say uh, the dog is actually invented the Velcro, but actually uh, uh, the dog is actually playing an, uh, a role whereby when uh, this guy, an engineer, was hunting okay, with his dog, he noticed that there's a lot of uh, sticky um, onto the uh, dog's fur and also on his socks. So looking under the microscope, the engineer noticed and observed that there are actually tiny hooks, tiny hooks, okay, hooking on the fabrics and on the dog fur. So after exper ex uh, after experimenting with the textile, they uh, they finally arrived at the newly invented nylon, okay, and actually invented this velcro. So there's a lot more products that has been done accidentally. Okay, these are only a few, okay. So if you move on to the next one, okay, uh, you need to know what is a new product, okay? There's so many kinds of new product, okay? So what is it? So you can look at this uh, this uh, picture, and you notice that there's a lot of products here, okay? So what kind of products for each of these iPod? There's so many types of product. So can you identify, okay? What is actually the uh, product for new to the world? Okay, new to the world. So, new to the world. Which one is the new? Is is called the new product? Okay. So actually, if you notice, iPod is actually new to the world, right? Previously. Okay. So this is one type of new product. Okay. The next one is uh, new to the firm. There's another new type of product. It's called new to the firm. So if you notice which one is new to the firm, so again iPod, iPod is also new to that firm which is Apple, okay, and now the next one is 
what kind of product is actually an addition to the existing product line so if you notice here after they have invented the iPod they have uh, produced other products that is addition to the existing product ok so you can see there's iPod classic iPod mini ok so these are the addition now the next one what is the type of products that is as an improvement and division to the existing product so it means that after we have the existing product what are the products that are more improved so if you notice here after the existing one they improve again which which is the iPod touch ok iPod nano and iPod shuffle ok so these are the improvement done after the existing product now the next question is what are the products that is reposition repositioning product so that will be the iPad ok and iPad is the product that has been repositioned from the iPod ok in Apple the last of uh, type of product is the cost reduction product so do you see any product here in Apple that is uh, reducing the, the cost ok so we don't know so we don't really know that because um, we, we don't really know much about the Apple where which product is has been reduce cost ok but actually overall ok the next slide will show you that these are the types of products types types of product ok that is uh, from the textbook so we will know that there are six types of product and we can easily identify which are the examples of product from each of the uh, product uh, from iPod ok so actually here we can sum it up from this chapter ok what are the strategic elements of product development so here to strategize we need to know the new product process that I will show you later we need to know about the product innovation charter ok and we need to know about the product portfolio the new product process ok I will show you the next one the new product process is, is actually taking the new product idea first so from the new product idea it will go to the concept development ok it will go to develop uh, sorry from from the concept uh, development we will evaluate the concept ok and then we will develop the product and we will launch alright ok coming back to the second element the product innovation charter ok this is also very important because this is a strategy the strategy for new products which will ensure that the team will develop the products ok and the team will develop in line with the firm's objective and also the marketplace opportunities now the next one is the product portfolio now this is different than the product innovation charter whereby it's more of a way to assess the new product which one is the best which one can add to the existing line ok given by the financial and strategic objectives Okay, thank you very much.